What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Gardening in Alicia Land with, with your garden girl Alicia Ann. In today's video we are going to do a garden tour uh, of the garden lot and why garden tours are important. Garden tours are essential if you want to grow your garden. And I think they're even more important than journaling when it comes to actually seeing how your plants do. Especially if you cannot put into words what your, um, sorry I'm looking at a butterfly that just landed on my butterfly plant. Um, what, you can't put into words what your garden what your plants are doing. Let me turn you around and show you this butterfly. See the butterfly? Told you that they love that lipstick. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a lipstick petunia or something that starts with a P and ends with an A. Yes, my garden is very weedy, but I think it helps during the summer heat. No, you can't really see him anymore. So, anyway, this is my butterfly garden. And it's very weedy, but my milkweed has grown. Oh, I just made the butterfly move. And I tried planting some sweet basil in here but me watering it I didn't water properly um, I watered too hard with it being uh, planted from seed and yeah you can see how that's going but we might have two little seed starts in there this is my coxcomb and like I showed you my milkweed um, my plumbe, my plumbago is doing pretty good. Something, take a look, something has actually got a hold of my coxcomb. And then we have, um, my hibiscus. And it is blooming. So here's a neat fact, if you know nothing about hibiscus, like I didn't know anything about them, is they bloom for one day and then they drop their flower. So that's pretty cool. And tortoises love to eat the flowers from the hibiscus. My brother-in-law has a brother who raises tortoises and they love hibiscus flowers. Just a fun little fact. So my calibrosia is pretty much dying on me. Now I'm told that it's going to come back, but we'll see. That one over there did die. The um, hedges that my brother-in-law and I planted um, from his yard to mine pretty much are dead, dead, dead. They might come back. Some of them have some green on them, but not too much. Um, my mother gave me a clipping of her azalea. So we're just putting it in water and seeing what it's going to do. And she gave me some clippings of that. My bird bath. Okay. So let's walk out here to the garden lot and show you what's going on. Oh, my zinnias. They're looking pretty. So. Over here in Pallid Bed A is my butterfly bush. It's bright. The sun was not bright when I decided to come out here, but then it got bright. My butterfly bush, my lipstick plant. I have a tomato. One little bitty tomato growing on that. 
let me turn you around. So, here's another fun fact about the tomatoes during the summer that I didn't know, but I'm learning as a, you know, beginning gardener, is that during the heat of the summer, that the tomato plants, all of my indeterminate tomato plants are still producing, but not very much, and they don't get nowhere near as big as they did in the spring. So I'm still, you know, harvesting tomatoes, but they'll start ripening on the vine when they're itty bitty, like cherry tomatoes, maybe a little bigger than a cherry tomato. But um, they're still edible. They're still delicious if you like tomatoes. And you can still have tomatoes even if you don't grow big tomatoes during the summer. All right, let's get back to the garden tour. So, like I said... Um, palette bed A. These are my, I don't know if you can see them, but right here, I mean, I have some peppers. I mean, these are Tabascos. I got, I can't really see it very well, but I just harvested a lot of Tabascos from that plant. I mean, and it's loaded again. Um, they got to get bigger, of course, but not too much bigger. Here's another Tabasco plant. Um, and I just harvested my habaneros off of my habanero plant. That's two in this five-gallon bucket. And then here's this one. And I got, I got a few habaneros growing on here. I, I Like I said, I just harvested quite a bit of habaneros. Um, I've been making some the quick canning method habaneros and for some reason I decided to put these tomatoes tomato plants in there and they're doing pretty good. I'm sorry about this shadow. And, okay, here's an example. Let's see. Can we get this better Whew. Not really, but there's an example of, that one's not going to get too much bigger off of there. Um, that's probably about as big as it's going to get before it starts blushing and ripening. Um, but it is capable. We are still capable of actually... Um, actually getting tomatoes through the summer um, before the tomato plant actually peters out. Now, these are my jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, and I have three that I planted in the ground, um, and then two I planted in a pot. So we're going to see what they do and how they do. They have this little area to, to grow, over here are my bougainvilleas that, um, this one looks a lot happier here than it did over there in the flower, I mean the butterfly garden, wherever it is over there in that mess. Um, so she looks a lot happier here, but I'm working on this area and making it a flower bed, garden bed, whatever you want to call it so that I can plant some stuff. This is another bougainvillea, and I don't know, maybe I'm not watering it enough. It should have perked up by now. I did water it last night, but I don't guess I watered it good enough. Okay. So as you can see, a lot of my stuff is very weedy, and very not, not producing very well. But it is still producing, and that gives me hope that I'm still going to have something to harvest. My harvest have not been huge at all, but I have had about five or six small harvest, and I have given plenty of my harvest away to family and friends, and I have 
made um, jam with my harvest with my peppers and also um, sorry about that also I've made some salsa some sweet and spicy salsa which actually was a hit if you can believe that or not so that's pretty good um, and I'm thinking about going in the house and showing you just how easy it is to make jam uh, some kind of pepper jam and some kind of sweet and spicy salsa. So be on the lookout for that. Alright, let's get back to the garden tour on the garden lot. I just like saying that. Sounds cool to me anyways. So, let's turn you around. Okay. So next to my jack-o'-lanterns is my tomato. Um, black creme. And as you can see here, he's quite small. Um... And it's not going to be too much longer before he decides to ripen um, on here. He won't get much bigger than this right now. So, we'll see what happens there. This one, I don't know how well it's going to do. It is actually just from a sucker. Most of my plant, my tomato starts that are in pots are from the suckers of all of my tomatoes. So, this is my big tomato, and he's actually blushing. Um, the first ones I got were huge off of here. But that's, um, and it took quite a while for it to ripen. That's quite small. Um, but um, I got sidetracked. We're going to go back over here. So, this is my sweet potatoes. Um, my sweet potato slips that I planted in the pot. Something has gotten a hold of them. I don't know what it is that makes this type of holes in your plants. But, as you can see, I mean, there are plenty of holes in these. And I have cut them and cut them off and cut them off. Oh, 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 sorry, baby. I just stepped on a pumpkin plant. Oh, no, please don't break. That's not cool. The real truth. These are my Connecticut filled, Connecticut filled pumpkins. I just stepped on this plant that I just transplanted in the ground yesterday. I'm praying that I didn't break him. So, because I only had two of the Connecticut fields. But there is some chocolate cherry tomatoes that are actually flowering pretty well. So, we'll see. And if you just shake them, they will... They will... Um, fertile be fertile and my black pearls see how weedy this bed is and this bed is doing so much better than the bed that don't have any weeds growing or have as many weeds growing in it so they're them over there are so much taller and fuller and prettier than these over here and they're everything's the same the way I planted with what I planted and everything. So, here's my um, pepper plant. I forget what I named it, but I have to go back and look. I name all my plants. I give them cool, funny looking name, or I give them cool names, anyway, to me. But she's, um, yeah, she's doing good. I need her to produce. So, this is just a crazy garden harvest I guess so I have cantaloupe cantaloupe that is growing all throughout my bed on my trellis and okay so my cantaloupe is getting attacked by something that loves its leaves. I think it's a little bitty grasshopper, to be honest with you. But, um, and the only reason I say that is because I spotted a little bitty grasshopper that I tried to kill the other day. Um, but, I don't know, I can't see that. Y'all probably can't see that either. Um, but I do have, let me turn you over, turn you around. Okay, so, here is... My cantaloupe. It's got two 
vines going up and around the tomato plant. But we may or may not have cantaloupes. But look at this baby. Can you see that? It's got... I'm praying that it's um, going to fertilize. I know nothing about taking care of cantaloupe, so this is my first growing, my time, first time to grow cantaloupes ever. But, um, they have some kind of black stuff on the back of their leaves, and I don't know what that is uh, at all. So, we'll see. But, I got baby cantaloupes coming up throughout this bed here. So, that is pretty neat, I think. My marigolds are start, starting to die. It has absolutely covered my one pepper plant there. My sweet peppers I actually harvested a little off of. And my climbing roses are doing pretty well. And then you have my cucumbers. This is my cucumber vine, and I don't know if this... Baby right here is going to be fertile or not. Um, I did not go in and fertilize the plant, but we got another one back here. So, I think a lot of, I don't have any kind of shade for it. So, I know that the sun is definitely getting it. But, we'll see what happens. And then, I got uh, another cantaloupe right there. And... I think there's three, yeah, three cantaloupes growing, baby cantaloupe, I mean cantaloupe, cucumbers, baby cucumbers are here, one, two, three, four, now, how they got, how this guy got over here, my, your guess is as good as mine, um, cause I had planted them, you know, along this trellis, so, we're just going to see. And then these, like I said, these pearl peppers are doing awesome. They're getting big and full and trying to redden, which is ripening. So that's cool. And got some peppers right here growing. And that's a Tabasco pepper and my marigolds I've harvested quite a bit of marigold seed from my marigold plants and then this is my um oh I forgot the name of it don't you just hate when you forget the name of something because you did not absolutely at all put a label on your plants I hate that and I hardly ever put labels on my plants um and now i cannot remember this butterfly plant's name so if you know it please put it down in the description mom especially you you should be watching my youtube videos so could you please uh comment down below what this plant is that i just showed you um you're the one that gave me the clipping for it so um i would greatly appreciate it mama Alright, um, let's continue on the garden tour. We're almost over with the garden tour, so don't worry, it's not going to be too long. Um, tried to flip it around, but I did not. Okay, coming up next is the chocolate cherries. Alright, so here's my chocolate cherries. And a chocolate cherry tomato is a cherry tomato that turns like a really pretty... Um, burgundy-ish color and it's an indeterminate vining tomato and when it's ripe this is not the actual ripeness of the the chocolate cherry but it is very pretty if you like maroon or burgundy colors it is a very pretty very pretty um, tomato that you can eat or make salsa with so, and it's got some flowers. I don't know if you can see that. I cannot see it from where I'm standing, but yes. It's got some flowers on it. And some flowers right here. So, we'll see. We might have some more chocolate cherry tomatoes 
soon? I don't know. But I just harvested some off of my plant. Um, and then my okra. This is a, just a common variety okra. And I don't know if it does really well in a pot. But my leaves are turning yellow. I don't know if I've overwatered them or underwatered them. Um, like you can see, the leaves are turning up like it's cupping. So I'm trying to cup something. But I still have okra growing. So that's cool. This one is probably is soft. So it's probably ready to harvest. My dad says when they're about three inches. I think that's about two inches long. But when they're three inches, that you should harvest them. But I got okra. That one. I got this one. I got this one coming on. I have this one. I have... I mean, you can see where I've actually harvested okra. I got these growing. And these. So it's been really a neat plant to to grow and um i've harvested a few so so here's another fun fact for you um if you don't have an oven like i don't have an oven and you don't really want to boil something to preserve it what i found from doing some research and i cannot remember her name if i find the name uh, of her channel i will put it in the um, description below but you can actually wash the okra off, cut it up, put it in a toaster oven on 250 for three minutes. Uh, you know, lay them flat down, your, your um, slices of okra, lay them flat down, cook them for, uh, or bake them in the toaster oven on 250 for about three minutes. And then let them cool off and then put them in a freezer bag. And they will be perfect for um, frying up okra whenever you get ready or you have enough okra to fry up. So that's what I'm doing. And it seems to be working. So next time I fry some okra, I will show you. Okay, I thought that was a fun little neat fact to learn. Alright, so, alright. Here is my eggplant. I have eggplant growing here. Eggplant growing here eggplant blooms this baby i have had a lot of success with this japanese long eggplant and i have harvested off of this plant about six times now since the planting of it i mean it's got eggplant growing everywhere and with this is perfect size for me because they don't get very long before they ripen and you can eat them. And they're delicious when you cook them right. So, again, the wind helps pollinate them and fer make them fertile. But I just kind of every morning come out and, you know, kind of just rub my hand over them so that I help it pollinate. Okay, and here is another of my habanero plants that are flowering some of the flowers are actually producing hobs now that's cool and um yeah so another habanero plant uh, so i i guess you could say i'm like a habanero bucket farmer because i have so many habanero uh, pepper plants growing in um, pots and in five gallon buckets so <laughs> I think that's pretty neat so um anyway we are actually finished with the garden tour but I want to show you something pretty neat turn around I don't know if we can get it but butterflies actually like cantaloupe flowers that's pretty cool. Can you see that? Let's see. Can I hold it steady long enough?
All right. Oh, it went back to the cantaloupe. So it does like the cantaloupe. So maybe, just maybe, with the butterflies going to the cantaloupe flowers, will be successful on a butterfly harvest. Oh, back to the cantaloupe it goes. Okay. Okay, so some fun little facts that we learned. We learned that tomatoes during the summer still produce, but don't produce near as many tomatoes as they do in the spring. Um, I haven't done any fall tomatoes, so I can't tell you that. But they still produce, they still get ripe, but they are only, they're a lot smaller than a normal size spring tomato. Um, and they still taste delicious. Uh, from everybody that I know of that eats actual tomatoes, my mom is made a few of um, Leisha Land tomato sandwiches from my small little tomatoes that I've given her. And my sisters use the tomatoes. And I have actually used them for my salsa. Um, so that's a fun little fact. Another fun fact that we learned is that if you're not familiar with growing hibiscus, is that they flower, they open up their flowers so the hibiscus open up their flowers for a day the flowers fall off and then the tortoises love to eat the fallen flowers off the hibiscus plant if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit that little notification bell so you won't miss another upcoming video and uh, may you have a blessed day, like always. Peace out. May you have a blessed day. Bye. Love you.